What's going on, everyone? Happy Friday to everyone. Hopefully, everyone is doing well, staying safe, healthy. If you had taken a COVID test, hopefully you have tested negative. If you did test positive, I really hope you have a full and speedy recovery with no long COVID issues. It is time now for the Friday edition of the Pandemic Update for Friday, July 5th, 2024. I hope everyone in the United States had a great 4th of July yesterday. Hopefully, it did not have any exposure to COVID, and hopefully it was just a good day overall. If you're new to my channel, this is where we do the daily pandemic update on all things COVID and any other virus that could be a health threat to you. Today, we'll be talking about various different viruses, including COVID and measles. We might talk about some of the other stuff as well. And we do surprisingly have CDC data. That's right. You don't usually get updates on the day after a holiday, but we did get it today. So if you're new here, subscribe down below. Give this video a thumbs up if you like the video. Of course, that helps push this content throughout the algorithm. Share these videos with anyone you know. We need to keep as many people safe and informed as possible. Leave a comment down below and hit that notification bell. That will tell you when the most recent update is out. All right, we do have several things to get through today. First off, CDC. No, not the United States CDC. The CDC of Taiwan reports 932 COVID hospitalizations, and they do report 64 deaths, so that's not good. And it says here, flu continues. Hospitals reported 101,000 visits for flu-like illness in the last week. Wow, that's a huge number for Taiwan, while 68 severe cases and 16 flu-related deaths were also reported. So Taiwan is reporting that. They're also reporting as for COVID, the variants there are the KP.2 variant and the LB.1 variant is increasing as well. Greece is also reporting that COVID-19 infections continue to rise, including deaths. A total of 22 people died between June 24th and the 30th from COVID-19. During the last four weeks, the medium weekly was eight and for the same week in 2023-18. All right, moving on to this now. Portugal, COVID-19 has surpassed the peak of last winter. Specific mortality from COVID-19 corresponded to 15 deaths per 14 days per million inhabitants, having exceeded the maximum values obtained in the last winter and summer. So, wow, Portugal, things not going well there. New York City. COVID-19 cases are up 250% in two months, and this variant's harder to duck, they're saying. So COVID-19 in New York City, it is really going up. We've been watching it in the data. We'll be able to take a look at New York State's data today because New York State did update today which is a big surprise, but unfortunately, there's another state we won't be able to take a look at. I'll show you that in a little bit. New confirmed measles cases reported in Butler County. No, not Pennsylvania. Butler County, Ohio, is reporting that there is a new case of measles. This is just north of Cincinnati, I believe, somewhere between Dayton and Cincinnati, Ohio. And I do want to end the news portion of the segment on, well... You may consider it good news. You may not consider it good news. It's how you want to look at it. Willie Nelson returns to the performing stage after unspecified illness. Yes, it's good news that he's feeling better again and that he was able to perform. But is it really good news that he's back out on the road? I mean, he just got over being sick for several weeks. And now here we go. He's back out on the road, I guess. I mean, I get it. They want to continue performing. This is something they've been doing all their lives. This is something they enjoy doing. It's their livelihood. But let's face it, it is really dangerous for these performers. How many performers do we have to see get sick or even die until someone takes a stand and say, wait a second here. This is really dangerous for us to be out there on the road. But hey, nonetheless, I'm happy to hear that Willie Nelson is back uh, again from from being sick. He's back feeling better again. I don't know if I'm so happy that he's back out on the road, but hey, to see him not sick, that is a good thing. All right, the UK did update today, and the weekly COVID cases in the UK, well, once again, they rose. They're up by 12.2%, 3,230 cases. The rise is not as big as last week, so we will say that is some good news. And I also read on X, I did not pull up the chart, but I also read on X, there are some indications that in England, 
the hospital admissions may be starting to peak. So that's some good news as well. We didn't really get much of an update on deaths. The most recent update is 143. That goes back to June 21st. And it looks like hospitalizations for all of UK are monthly because it has not updated since the 29th. Maybe we'll get an update on that next week. I don't know what their deal is. But once again, UK, 3,230 cases. That is only up by 12.2%. So it's not as big of a rise. Taking a look at today's pollen level, drum roll please, 45% of the country is in low to medium status. And today we introduced some yellow to portions of New York and Vermont. And of course, the West. There's a lot of orange in the Pacific Northwest. There continues to be orange as well. And that's where the main orange is. What I meant to say was, in the West, there's a lot of yellow. And in the Pacific Northwest, we do still see orange in Oregon and Washington. All right, air qualities. I can guarantee you one thing. Air qualities are better than they were last night. I should have taken a screenshot. There are screenshots out there on X. I should have had one up. You should have seen what the air qualities looked like during fireworks time last night. Wow, there was a lot of red, even some purples in places. But hey, today is not perfect either. Take a look at the East Coast, where it's very hot in the East Coast. We do see a lot of yellow and oranges up and down that I-95 corridor. Out on the West Coast, take a look at this. Really bad air qualities in Los Angeles. This is actually not too much better than last night. i got to be honest with you. Really bad in L.A. today. Really bad up in uh, Central California. Wildfires are going to become a problem. It's extremely hot in California. Temperatures over 100 degrees in most areas. With desert areas, heat index is 120 to near 130 degrees. Please limit your time outside if you're in those areas. But once again, the East Coast also not doing well. Up around Boston and Connecticut, just really bad today. Take a look at heat-related illnesses, and heat-related illnesses are on the increase in the majority of the country. I know this map's not showing up, and I can tell you that North Dakota, South Dakota is still not reporting for some reason. I don't know what the deal is up there, but it's increasing up there as well. All right, we do have another channel, or another place where I talk about the weather. And that is over on X. The big topic that I'm talking about there is Burl expected to hit Texas as a hurricane. Yes, it's trended north and it's trended stronger. This is not good. If you live in uh, Texas area, anywhere from southern Texas right on up through Houston, Corpus Christi, any of these areas, please, you want to go over and check that out. And I'm going to be doing another update at some point this evening, maybe in the 7 o'clock hour. I don't know what time it's going to be, but I'm going to be doing yet another video for that. And if you want to see my videos for that, let's refresh this because it is not up to date. Uh, if you want to see my videos for that, it's Climate Data Report over on YouTube as well. So Climate Data Report on YouTube and on X, we did post an update on Burl. And we're going to be doing another one this evening because this is not looking good for Texas. All right, Philadelphia yesterday, and I may have to pull this up. Yep, I can pull this up real quickly. They did update. Philadelphia for Thursday, 808 EMS incidents. And on an interesting note, 198 fire rate fire incidents thought that would have actually been a little bit higher because hey fourth of july but i'm glad it's under 200 so that's a good thing all right taking a look at what's going on in montgomery county which earlier today was really busy with near 20 calls slightly better right now actually only six that's not bad at all but we do see not one not two but three respiratory emergency calls that would be expected with these bad air qualities how about chester county pennsylvania What's going on there? Uh, fairly busy in Chester County right now. Busiest I've seen all day, actually. And we do see one heat, cold exposure. That's probably for the heat. Respiratory, unconscious person, allergic reaction, falls, falls, seizures, heart problems, sick person, and EMS standby. I don't know why I like to read Chester County's calls and not Montgomery County, but uh, I just do sometimes. All right, moving on. We have to refresh this as well. Pennsylvania usually has a second update for wastewater during the week and we can see nowhere in the state of pennsylvania right now is seeing a large increase we just see a small increase in center county pennsylvania and down here in york county pennsylvania also take a look at this this is really interesting in lehigh county which is allentown area and bethlehem the lehigh valley and they're actually seeing a decrease at this time pennsylvania is an interesting state it's my home state i've been following it since the start of the pandemic one thing I've noticed about our state is, while other places may have their summer surges, 
Pennsylvania always seems to be in the summertime doesn't rise that much until the middle part of August in the second half and like for example Center County Pennsylvania they have seen some big increases when Penn State University goes back so we seem to be I don't know we uh, follow we we increase when the college towns increase and we do have a lot of people that exit the state like go to New Jersey Shore, but we also do get a lot of people that come into our state in the Pocono Mountains. So it's just it's just really weird, and I've noticed that the past several years, where second half of summer Pennsylvania just goes kaboom when the college students go back. So we'll have to see if that happens this year, or maybe we'll be spared a big wave again. We're not seeing any super large increases anywhere in the state right now, which is really interesting all right walgreens this week the national positivity rate is 36.5 percent the prior week was 34.1 percent that's just only up by 2.5 percent at this time taking a look at canada let me refresh this and canada shows 24 sites now are showing an increase number of sites showing no change is 25 decrease 11 sites there are now four high sites, nine moderate sites, 10 low sites, and 37 new sites. All right, let's take a look at CDC data. Drum roll, please. This is one thing I do need to refresh. Maybe it updated, maybe it didn't. All right, currently there are 56 sites that are showing 80 to 100% covid increase 60 sites in those or excuse me 176 sites in those orange category which is 60 to 79 percent covid detected and you can see florida the vast majority of the sites are in the moderate to high category at this point still in the high category at hawaii i don't think this is one bit of data that uh, actually updated for the cdc this seems to be the same number but i can tell you for a fact other bits of data did update. Let's just get right to a very important one. And that is the variant update, which just updated a few minutes ago before recording. So this is going to be a little bit confusing to you. Maybe, maybe not. Because KP.3, which was increasing, actually dropped this week. I know. Surprise! You know why it dropped this week? Take a look how many different variants there are. KP.3, 24.5%. KP.2, 21.5%. LB.1 is at 10%. KP1.1 is at 8.9%. JN.1 is at 7.4%. JN1.16.1 is at 4.8%. JN1.7 is at 4%. JN1.16 is at 3.1%. JN 1.18 is at 2.2%. You get the idea. I could go on and on. There are probably close to 20 variants here that are over 1% at this point. I actually did not count them all, but just to say the least, there's a lot of them. So that's why KP.3 dropped, and we are clearly still in variant soup at this time. All right, emergency department visits, percentage increases and decreases. Hawaii, let's just start off with some good news. Hawaii actually dropped in the past week. California continues to see a substantial increase. Nevada, substantial increase. Pennsylvania, believe it or not, despite what I showed you in wastewater, is reporting a substantial increase. And who knows? Pennsylvania, you know, post-4th of July could get the ball rolling here as well. Virginia, West Virginia, Ohio, Indiana, Illinois, all seeing substantial in Actually, no, correction. Illinois is a moderate increase. All the other places are substantial. Texas is substantial. Louisiana is substantial. Wisconsin, Iowa, Nebraska, Colorado, Idaho, Nevada, substantial increases. Florida continues to be substantial increase. Georgia, and then there's a lot of places with moderate increases, but we do have some places with a substantial decrease. Maine is a substantial decrease. Vermont is a substantial decrease. And I have noted with Maine, I was doing some looking earlier. Maine is another one. Sometimes Maine does not really get the ball rolling on a summer surge until the second half of summer. So we'll have to see what happens there. Some places, though, like Florida, they typically do peak in August. Uh, Texas, as well, does typically peak for the summer surge in the end of August. So we'll see what happens there. Wyoming and South Dakota are seeing decreases at this time. All right, moving on, taking a look at what's going on. We do want to take a look at some of these uh, emergency department visits. We're not going to take a look at all states. Tomorrow we'll probably go through every state because I don't think tomorrow's going to be a busy news day. But, but what do I know? 
things do change. You know, things pop up out of nowhere. Taking a look at this, United States, 0.97%, almost 1% of all emergency department visits are people diagnosed with COVID-19. And I want to show you some good news. Take a look at Hawaii. Hawaii continues to drop at this time. Thumbs up for Hawaii. It is continuing to drop. That is fantastic news. However, we do come to California now, and we do see California. Yeah, it looks like it was still rising, but there may be signs that maybe California is starting to peak. Ever so slight signs that it may drop. I hope that's the case, and I hope it's just not one of these notches that you see up along the way. But, hey, if they were to peak now, that would be fantastic news. Of course, we have to wait about a week or two. Let's see what happens with 4th of July. There were a huge number of people that just gathered together all around the country. All right, moving on now. We will come back to more of this again tomorrow, taking a look at what's going on with epidemic status. That continued to grow in California. It also continued to grow in all of the southeast and portions of the northeast in New Hampshire starting to grow. In Massachusetts, it's growing, and it's likely growing in Maine and Vermont at this time. So Maine, uh, maybe 4th of July might be what gets the ball rolling for you for a COVID wave and taking a look. There's a lot of other places that are likely growing or are growing. We don't see anywhere at all declining this week. Even Hawaii, which was declining, was likely declining, I should say, last week. It is just not at this time. It's stable or uncertain. And finally, moving on to the influenza map, and we see a big pile of green. Some places are minimal with a higher, brighter shade than others, but for the most part, Influenza is not really much of an issue right now, and that includes Puerto Rico at this time, which is seeing a high number of COVID cases at this time. Taking a look at what's going on with New Jersey today, we can't. New Jersey did not update. It shows no data, but we can zoom this in. Let's see. Maybe there's something if we zoom it in. Now it shows on the 3rd, they had 243 hospitalizations, which was a number we reported on yesterday. New York State, 1,792 cases added. There's many different reasons why it's higher. One being New York State, one being yesterday was a holiday. So yes, New York State is coming in with some relatively high case numbers today. And when we take a look at this chart here, you can see looks like back on July 1st, they had 1,905 cases reported. So yes, unfortunately, New York State continues to go higher. But good news, hospitalizations are down ever so slightly in New York State today. 831 with 80 people in the ICU. Alrighty, folks, that does it for the Thursday edition of the Pandemic Update. I hope you found this informative. I hope um, you enjoyed seeing all the data. Of course, we did see some bad data today that suggests some places are still rising. Though the good news is California, potential peak. Hawaii is dropping right now we'll take a look at the rest of the states tomorrow for that and any other news that pops up if you enjoyed this video give it a thumbs up if you want to see more content like this subscribe down below share these videos with anyone you know hit that notification bell and of course leave your comments down below i will see you all again next time until i see you again next time stay safe everyone and have a fantastic weekend